So, I just literally got back in from a pickup. Now, this is a place that I've been to before. I know a lot of people do videos and stuff, but I'm not gonna video one of my better hunting holes and let everybody know where I get good stuff for almost nothing. I've got quite a few places that I can go to every couple months, and they'll either hold something in the back for me and it'll be sitting there, or um, it might be laying on the floor, something new came in or whatever the case may be. Sometimes they actually call me if they get a big bunch of stuff in and ask to, you know, just sell it straight out right. So I don't, you know, I just go there, I look at what they got and I either buy it or I don't. So, I just literally got back in from a pickup. Now, this is a place that I've been to before. I know a lot of people do videos and stuff, but I'm not gonna video one of my better hunting holes and let everybody know where I get good stuff for almost nothing. I've got quite a few places that I can go to every couple months, and they'll either hold something in the back for me and it'll be sitting there, or um, it might be laying on the floor, something new came in or whatever the case may be. Sometimes they actually call me if they get a big bunch of stuff in and ask to you know, just sell it straight out right. So I don't, you know, I just go there, I look at what they got and I either buy it or I don't. You know, and sometimes it could be thousands of items all at once for 100, 150 bucks, 200 bucks or so. I spent 40 bucks I know it's a pretty heavy stack on everything you see in here all this was 40 bucks so this box and this box now I know to someone it might just look like a bunch of junk in to the people selling it that's usually what it looks like it's just a bunch of junk to most people out there to me this is like gold now I got these two projector bulbs in here these are brand new NOS never been out of the box this one on clearance cost 25 bucks when it was sold new 20 or 30 years ago, maybe even longer than that. This might date back to the 80s or so. It looks like it could be, um, geez, yeah, it looks like it could be about 1980-ish or so. I'm not familiar on when the boxes came out. I just know the brands. This one right here, this Wyco brand here, 50 to 80 bucks right off the bat, no problem at all. And I'll have to clean up the box to get top dollar for it, but. NOS all day long. I hunt for these sorts of things. Happen to be a few there. There was some film, movie film, which I got, and usually I'll look for these. And these usually get me all my money back on stuff like this. Now this GE version here, this is 150 watt, 120 volt DJL. That's basically the socket type that this bulb goes into. This one sells for 70 to 90 bucks pretty easily. Again, if it's nice new mint in the box. Again, it was $25 when it was originally sold on clearance. So these at some point cost 150 bucks in some cases, but most of these days use some sort of, you know, modern day projection equipment that just takes a LED or a small little tiny bulb. Those are expensive too, but so right off the bat, my 40 bucks is back. Now one of these I'll probably keep for projector that I picked up not too long ago that this will fit in. This one's a universal one, it fits all three of them. This one fits the one, so it can fit in other ones too. But again, these projector bulbs, projector lamp is usually what they're called, are worth big money. Now we've made over time a lot of money off of these things. Sometimes I'll put them in the projector if it's a nice one. I have a very nice projector top of the line that could go for three or four hundred if it works and I have the bulb so anyway that might be where that one goes to now what's also in here which is something I don't run into very often there's some uh, 16 millimeter film I do have a 16 millimeter projector um, so this one might come out pretty good some of these are color um, there's a mix in here too. There's 16 millimeter and there's a bunch of eight millimeter. I'll take them all. I'll take 35, eight millimeter, 16, uh, even 70 millimeter. I have some in-house from, believe it or not, uh, Return of the Jedi back when that came out. There's some fairly nice reels and they're long reels. These are probably about 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. Again, it kind of depends on how much they've, you know, wound onto there. 
This one here is airports, takeoffs and landings and stuff. I'm not sure if it's all that way, but I looked at a little grouping of it in the store prior to you know buying them because sometimes this could just be junk. These are relatively new 70s, I guess that would be new. Now some of the 16 millimeter though are World War II um, combat newsreel footage, which I was really surprised. Now, the first thing I ever do when I grab something like these cans is smell them. Now, why would you smell them? Because if they have a, a vinegary smell to them, which this one doesn't, it would be a uh, vinegar syndrome infecting the, the film itself, and it's probably not going to be much good. But this one's pretty nice. It's a Kodak original. None of these would um, have nitrate in them. I don't buy nitrate unless they're really early, and I would specifically call somebody for that because you can't ship it. Last time I bought a bunch of 35 millimeter films found in the, the attic of an old theater in, in Mississippi when we lived there, somebody purchased the huge lot of 35 millimeter, I mean feature length films, we had like 34 of them, like $1,500 and they sent somebody out who packed them up safely on a pallet on our front porch and then jacked them off, put them on a truck, and they worried about shipping them. So that's the only way I'd mess with that. But also in here were bigger reels, including this one here, which does seem to be some sort of military-related one, which I'm going to have to look at. It does look to be several wound onto the same one as well. Just these reels I can get 10 bucks for, just the empty reel. If it had the case, I'd do much better. This is a nicer case, 216 millimeter. You can always tell it's bigger than obviously the other one. Um, most of this does appear to be some sort of war footage going up in the Korean War. Now they may just be news reels combined. It's hard to say, I have to actually watch them to see. And I'll just throw them on a projector, record it and see what it looks like. And there's more of them. These sorts of things are, um, let's see, what's this one say? 1954, so this one's probably Korean War era and Pearl Harbor, Normandy Burns, this one has newsreels. This one is full-fledged newsreels, so I could break them down and put them individually. Franklin, uh, Okinawa, Salute to the Navy, Camera th uh, Thrills of the War. Now these are probably dating to that time frame. I think I've got one more, no, I guess that's it. Now what I would do with these two is I would break them back down and sell them individually. I have a bunch of empty reels. I buy them whenever I see empty reels, so I always buy the, all the cans and the reels every time I'm out because I can always break them down and sell them in segments instead of selling them all together. I'll make more money. Most of these is exactly what I'll do with them. So there's a nice big stack of 16 millimeter here as well as the ones I just showed you. Again, the best way to get money would be to break them down. The eight millimeter I would break down the same way. I would break them down into segments or if it's a reel of all like airplanes or something, I take some good shots. I have a eight millimeter digitizer debating back and forth on getting a 16 millimeter one because you can digitize 16 millimeter film just as easy as you can eight millimeter. I got videos on that in my Patreon group. I actually show clips of some of the stuff we've taken off of this. Some are fairly nice clips, but now I didn't even consider a value in the reels. I didn't even worry about the value in the, the lamps because sometimes the lamp value could be wrong and all that other stuff. Those ones I was pretty sure on. But what I did do is I ran into a big chunk of albums, 78 records I should say, shellac, they're not vinyl, uh, and they're all by Glenn Miller. And this one had the one I've sold the most from almost that entire time frame routinely. There's a record in here that we probably sold 24, 25 of for 50 to 75 bucks right off the bat. So I instantly knew I had my money back even if nothing else sold, the lamps could not, they might not work. They could be dinged around or bounced around and they could be damaged and not work anymore. That's very, very possible. Let's see if I can crank out the one. I'm gonna show this one off here. I've talked about it for years and I'm still able to pull one out. This same place I got these at, I bought at least five others of this exact same record and everyone sells, it's a very quick seller. It's actually went up in value 25 to say 30 bucks. I've sold a copy of this for over 85 bucks before, depending on the condition. And we're just gonna give you one of the best secrets on, on 78 records. Again, I've been talking about this for years. If you were in my Patreon group, you've probably been finding these. I know quite a few patrons who have sold and found this exact same record as well. 
This is In the Mood by Glenn Miller, and this is nowhere near Glenn Miller's best 78. If you're gonna mess with 78s though, you're gonna have to know how to pack them correctly because they need to be packed like China. Condition-wise is everything in some of these, and you'll get a heck of a lot more. This one is, geez, probably an E minus in condition or an E. Now, what is that? It's a VJM standard of records. It is not a gold mine standard, which is used for 45s and LPs. The, the true diehard 78 people are going to want that type of grading system. VJM actually stands for Vintage Jazz Mart, and it was, a, I think, a location or something. But literally, that's how I grade every one of these. You want to be taken seriously, you need to grade them like the people who would collect them. You can't grade them like you would a 45 or an LP. But this one right here is an easy 50 bucks, every single one. I've sold at least 25 of this exact same disc. Now, I'm going to show off some of these in my Patreon uh, group because it'd be long, long, long video if I went and blew these all out here. Plus, I'm not going to give away all the secrets on what's valuable in stuff like this. But uh, all told, there's some nice 45s in here, including some from uh, Germany, originals from the 50s. I do extremely well with those. Most people don't mess with them. There's actually quite a few in here. You can see it's a nice little box. They all have picture sleeves. They look like they've all been about unplayed. I threw this in the in the uh, my cart actually. Uh, I found this too, reel to reel, and it's all jazz. It's all like 1940s, 50s, and 60s jazz. They're all very well taken care of. I'm not sure if that is the maker for sure, but Soundcraft is a generic name on uh, these sorts of things. It's not the best brand out there, but it's an interesting lot. It's in a little case like this, and it's, it's just full of all jazz, well-known jazz hits. If that's Harry James, this should do extremely well, being a reel-to-reel -reel set. Something like this, I'd probably put up to 125 and see what happens. I do have a reel-to-reel -reel player, so I'm able to actually uh, test it. So again, yeah, we're not gonna dig through it all, but I'll show you, I got some uh, more 45s. Uh, there's some more four and 45s in here. Uh, I'm not gonna read them all off or anything else like that, but again, I do extremely well. Now, these sorts of things I've been doing fairly decent with. Discogs, you can get 10 bucks for some of these sorts of things. You know, Discogs, it's its own monster. It's probably the biggest site for records on the planet, as far as I'm concerned. Everybody else dives through the more expensive stuff. If you know enough, if you know enough, and I'm not saying everybody's gonna be able to figure it out, but if you know enough, you spend enough time, you dig into these sorts of areas or areas that are outside the mainstream. Clothing I don't mess with, too much competition, not enough of it around here. I don't like going to garage sales because there's no guarantee I'm going to find something. If I'm going out and buying, I want to find a lot so I get the biggest bang for my buck. So I've stuck to the same types of places, the same types of merchandise for all these years when I go out buying. And it does me extremely well. To be honest with you, just in record value, just in record value, and again, I've got a, a good little assortment here. I picked through and only picked the good ones. I left a couple thousand records. I looked through them all, believe it or not, because I didn't want to have to haul out a ton of records. I was going to have to look through them here. I know the person. I'm not out in public when I'm looking through them, so it's just a matter of digging through some records, picking the ones I want, rolling them out to the front and cart, and seeing where we go on the price on those. So... You know, this is an excellent, excellent, excellent assortment. I'll show you a couple other ones in here. Let's see if I can find a promo on you. Well, this is an extremely interesting one here. Never seen anything like it. This is a Gallo Wine um, promotional 78 of Bonnie Baker singing Oh Johnny, which I've never even heard of. How good can wine be? So this is literally a promotional item. Now, I don't know what's on the back. This might be a radio station promotional 78 record. As far as I can see, I haven't been able to find one, but I haven't looked on my main research site yet online for records, but stuff like that can make us a ton of money. Now with Glenn Miller as well, there are some Glenn Millers out there that are worth way, way, way more than In The Mood, and they're fairly common ones. It's just like Bing Crosby that I always uh, seem to snag up, and I did find some Bing Crosby. 
Um, I did find uh, some 78 Disney records, which I usually don't find. There's some Christmas in here. Let's see if I can figure out where that Christmas was. Uh, Christmas 78s I do extremely well with. Um, this is a $25 disc right here. Something you put it up, you leave it. You know, it might take a little bit of time to sell, but you know, you list a bunch of them, you're gonna sell. On average, I sell a couple of these every single day. You know, to be honest with you, 78s. You know, already today I've sold two 78s for almost 30 bucks a piece, and it's a routine thing. I'm not gonna retire on 78s, but I'm sure as heck gonna make a lot of money doing it. Let's show you a couple other interesting ones. Uh, this is Benny Goodman Sextet. This is uh, uh, jazz, this is uh, swing jazz, I guess you would call it. It's a complete record set. The folders I do extremely well with. I've got a few other folders in this lot as well. Um, but this sort of purchase is right up my alley because the folks looking at it, it, it just looks like junk. There's no covers on the records. The film just looks like loose, you know, who knows? Who knows what's on it? I, again, I don't mind looking through stuff. I've got projectors, I've got scanners, I've got equipment to handle the 16 millimeter film as well. The bulbs, I can test them here. I've got projectors that will take both of those. So, you know, 45s are simple, easy to, to grade without even playing them. Um, reel to reel, you might need something on, but it's these sorts of purchases that make us probably the most money. And, and again, I'm not sinking much into this. If I went out garage selling half the day, I may not find anywhere near this amount of stuff. Just those two bulbs alone, you know, that's over a hundred bucks right there. That's right there, right off the bat. And then one record's 50 to $75. So, you know, am I gonna find that if I go to a thrift store in my area? Not at all. So I target source. I, I Everything I do for sourcing is targeted. I know where I'm going to go. I knew exactly what I was going to go looking for um, when I went to this person's shop. I knew instantly. First thing is, do you have any in the back for me? And then from there, it's, you know, hit the floor and see if there's any new ones that maybe I've missed or something else like that. I bought, in fact, there's probably three or four other ones in this lot that I bought at that same store as well that are $30 to $50 discs. Yeah, I'm not gonna retire on making these, but there's easily a thousand bucks plus in this purchase right here for 40 bucks. Easily, easily. It might even be closer to $1,500. And those aren't fantasy prices. That's not my, hey, Don's asking for that price on it. That's the actual value I should get out of these at the end of the day, less fees or something. But you know, overall, just the LPs and the albums, the 78 albums in here, are going to get me a pretty decent return on my investment. Spike Jones, I always sell the Spike Jones ones. Nutcracker Suite, this one's about a 35 to say $50 one, depending on the condition of the discs. There's a ton of money in this stuff and it's low lying fruit. The, the biggest secret, the biggest reason why I can say what's valuable in this, because most people out there will never dig into it. And even if they do, they'll be nervous on shipping them or they don't want to take it seriously it's too much to learn or too much to have to look up all the time. This has worked to me. I've invested in these types of items for 25 years. So for me, it's easy. I can just flip through these as quick as I can look at them in a store or wherever I'm at and, and get rid of all the ones that I don't need to mess with because the majority of what I find isn't worth that much money. Again, there's thousands of them I left. I picked up maybe a hundred records at max here. And that's all the good ones out of a thousand, multi-thousand, two or three thousand assortment of records sitting there. Most of them were 78s. There was some other uh, 45s country and stuff, which I don't mess with. Haven't found anything like rock and roll at this place. But again, that's why most people don't go there and why I go there is because they don't find what they want. They pass this stuff up. They don't know anything about it. It's not worth much to them. It's not worth trying to figure out. And even if you look up a lot of these on eBay or Discogs, Pop Psych, or any of the other platforms out there, like Glenn Miller and the earlier ones that might be worth 40 or 50 bucks. Glenn Miller might be a little different because you're going to see in the mood on eBay, but in Discogs as well. But a lot of the other ones in here, you probably won't be able to find a price looking on eBay. If you don't know about Discogs, you won't be able to find a price in a bunch of other ones. And if you don't know about Pop Psych, you'll be missing out on a lot of the better ones right off the bat. We pay for a service we pay for a platform just for records that helps us price them and it allows us to see information far far older than what ebay allows us to see on ebay you get three years on terapeak i think it's 14 or 12 or 14 years on, on where we look pop psych so that's usually what i do 
we have the monthly service. The only way this works though is that I've spent hours, years worth of time digging into this so I can know what's valuable, know what to buy off the top. If you don't know that, you're just gonna be buying stuff and wasting a ton of money. I guarantee you without a doubt that there's a lot of money to be made in here in Patreon. We'll list some, I'll show you some as we put them up. We'll dig into the valuable ones as well. Those in my YouTube membership, you'll see them as well. We'll go over some of the key ones in here, why I grabbed these. Again, every one of these was handpicked by me based on actual sales of these items. I think everything in here other than the film and the German ones, I've sold before at least once, twice, three times, some of these again, 20 and 30 times, the exact same record over and over and over again. They're scarce, but most people don't like looking and messing with these. Most people are intimidated by shipping these. Well, a lot of the items that we sell, especially with paper and stuff, most people think it's garbage. Most people you know, don't know what the keywords are, wouldn't even know how to look up a lot of it. And that's where you're gonna make the best money at. I don't mind spending less on this sort of undesirable material. I'm not going out to buy you know, a thousand dollar item to go ahead and flip it for $1,400 or whatever the case may be. I'm spending 40 bucks and I'll be able to get probably close to 1,500 back out of it. Again, it's a ploy, it works for me. I've invested, geez, heading towards 30 years of my life digging into this sort of thing and selling them in my free time until we went full time about 15, 16 years ago and this is all we do these days. So it's this sort of thing that bringing this in that makes us the most money, and it's a long-term investment. I'll sell some immediately when I list some. Right off the bat, I'll make hundreds of dollars. I'll sell some trickle down after that. Through the next week or two, we'll sell one or two a, a day or so, and then some of this stuff will sit and we'll sell some here and there. So we'll be making money from this well after we've made a, a $500 profit, $800 profit, we'll still be getting money in for a year or two, maybe even longer than that afterwards. We've got the space, we own a building these days because of selling, so it, it's a no-brainer. We never take anything down. Once it's listed, it's up until it's sold or eBay loses the listing or something else like that. But anyway, that's just a touch of this. If you wanna see more on this, Again, I'm going to have a uh, YouTube membership video as well as a Patreon video di uh, diving deep into just these items here. But anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. to say and it sounds just fine but let's put this question right on the line what is the zip code a postal quirk what does it do how does it if you'll lend an ear we'll be glad to explain how the zip code eases your postal pain <laughs> First, digit tells me which part of the nation your letter will find its destination. Since the country's divided into ten big sections, each with a number to establish direct, your letter has even departed. We've already got it started. The next two digits go hand in hand to a major post office over land. Since each big section has town after town. We need these numbers to really narrow things down. We've got the section, we've got the city. Just, Just two, two more, more numbers, numbers and we're sitting pretty. pretty. These last two digits are really specific. They're your local post office number. Terrific! <laughs> What a system, as you can plainly see, just five little numbers, quick as can be. But if you have a question or you have a doubt, if you're still not sure what the whole thing's about, just always remember, zip code defined means city to city in one straight line. But don't take it from us. Don't take it from me. Try it yourself. You'll see. Mm.
It's a better deal than you get from any other post office department.